Good afternoon all. I've got a lovely big circuit board here and uh, I'm going to put power to it and see if I can get it working. But the question is, what is this circuit board? Well, let's have a guess. What have we got here? A uh, big 40 pin chip, 40 pin chip, 40 pin chip, 40 pin chip. Uh, some 28 pin chips here, another one there. And then we've got some uh, what look like 16 pin chips. But we're going to have to get in a bit closer to see some of these numbers to try and work out what this is. Well, let's start here. Here we have, mm, what does it say? MPS, I'm working upside down as well. Uh, 6502, 6502, that's a microprocessor. It's not the one that I cut my teeth on. Uh, that was the Z80, but um, 6502, 8-bit computer, 8 bits of data, 16 address lines. So it can address up to... 65k of ram now these two devices here the numbers don't mean a lot but they're almost certainly roms they're sitting right next to the microprocessor what are these three things here they might be pals or gals or something of that nature not sure what that is but these chips over here these are very easily identifiable these are uh, 2114s which are static ram chips um, so what we have here are 10, actually 11, which is really weird. Why are there 11 RAM chips? Um, here's a printout of a 2114 RAM chip. It is a 1024 by 4 bit static RAM. So having two side by side is not surprising because that's four bits. This is the other four bits. So that's eight bits, uh, 1K of RAM, 2K, 3K, 4K, 5K, 5.5K. What's that all about? Um, that thing there is a 4066. Ooh, what's that? Is that some sort of phase lock loop? Let's look it up. Uh, no, that's a quad mm, bilateral switch. So sort of um, four analog switches. That I still don't understand why we've got 5K of RAM and uh, 1K by four bits of RAM. I just really don't get that. So if you haven't already guessed, well, this is very obviously an 8-bit computer. But which computer is it? Um, let's take a look at some more of these chips, these big 40-pin ones. Let's zoom in on those. Um, we have 6522s. It's some sort of VIA or um, PIO or something like that, a parallel interface adapter. And it goes to, well, they're right next to this connector, which says, if I bend C1 out of the way, it says keyboard connector. So yeah, this is an 8-bit computer, but which computer is it? Well, here's a clue. What's this lot here? We've got um, a couple of pots here, lots of capacitors, mm, transistors right next to this big MOS chip. Well, I'll give you a clue. This is the video interface controller. And that's a big clue, actually, as to what this computer is. Now, how do I know that this is the video section of the computer, um, particularly the color video section? Well, let's have a look at that crystal. That crystal, if it's 4.43 megahertz, that's the frequency of the color burst for a PAL TV signal. So let's check it out. What is it? Focus. Well, it's not 4.43 megahertz, but it is 8.86 megahertz. So that's twice the frequency of the color burst. They're obviously dividing that down in some way, down to 4.43 megs. That's the color burst for a color 8-bit computer. Now, over here, we've got a big power supply section. Um, this piece of metal looks like it's actually all one. I think it comes down here, goes down there, underneath, folds over and back over the top. Um, this mm, looks like a big TO3 transistor, but it's not. It's almost certainly a regulator. Horrible linear thing um lm32 i can't quite read that oh that bends up lm323 uh so that's going to be a five volt regulator would be my guess let's look it up yes here we are lm323 it's a three amp five volt positive regulator and it's virtually blowout proof that's a bold claim one percent accuracy three amp output current if suitably heat synced and this looks like it is suitably heat synced um i think it's time we put the power to it now very interestingly on this side 
I don't know whether we can see this. Yes, it says nine volts AC. AC. Right, this is the wonderful um, power pack that came with this thing. Doesn't look anything like the beige case that the computer is in. It's this rather stark black thing. Uh, it says transformer, 240 volts, 50 hertz. This is just going to be a transformer. I can't show you the top of this because it gives away what the computer is. Um, what have we got? Nine, well, we've got S.9 volts, 3 amps. But then we've got T200 milliamps for the fuse, which is a bit strange. But uh, yeah, so it's just a transformer in here. No uh, rectification, no smoothing, certainly no regulation. That's being done here. Uh, nice old school UK plug on this. So it's a, a UK computer. I mean, we know it's a European computer because it's PAL, because we've seen the 8.86 megahertz thing. This is UK. I thought you might just like to see inside one of these. That's a captive bolt, so that won't fall out. That's the inside of a UK plug. Um, also used in Ireland, I think Malta, Cyprus, Hong Kong. Long time ago, when I went to Hong Kong, they were using these. Don't know whether they still are, but yeah, that's how it's done. Um, so this pin here, these are, are half shrouded through the fuse, and then that goes to live, neutral, earth. Earth's not connected because we've only got a two core cable. So let's plug that in, put the nine volts AC onto this computer, see if it does anything. Right, here's the other end, that's the 9 volts AC, let's plug it in. Really fat pins on there, so it's a, a nice connector designed to take a lot of current. Um, well, it's hard to see whether it's doing anything, there are no LEDs on here. Actually there was an LED on the front of the case connected to there, but I've taken that off. Uh, so we have to take it a stage further now and connect a telly. Now the only telly I've got, um, television, is this Nikkei one. Um, it's very low resolution. I seem to remember it's 240 lines that way and probably not many more that way, but it is a telly. It does have um, a tuner on it. It's also got composite in, but I don't think this computer has any composite. I think I'm going to have to use uh, RF, radio frequency. So let's see if we can get a picture on the telly. Hmm, TV, no signal. Now, also supplied with this computer was this, gotta be careful not to um, short stuff on this board because it's powered up. This is, well, it's like a steel box, which has um, a DIN plug on one end of a long cable, a 180 degrees uh, pattern on that DIN plug. It also has a phono, RCA phono as the output. And then also supplied is this RCA phono to well, I think this is called a Belling Lee um, RF type connector. So that's going to be the modulated RF, uh, modulated with presumably, oh, well, color, video, possibly also audio. I don't know, actually. So let's plug that in. Let's have a quick look at the back of this computer. Right now on the back, we have two, um, what are these called? DIN sockets. Nothing's labeled. But one is clearly the 180 degrees pattern and the other one is a oh, one, two, three, four, five, six pin. This is a five pin. So it's obviously going to be that one. I'll plug it into that socket and we'll see what comes up on the telly. Right, let's put this rather strange metal steel by the look of it box there. Um, there's this really long cable here and I'll plug that into the RF socket on the top of my telly. And then the uh, DIN connector. Oh, now which way up were the connectors on there? I think it's that way. Plug that in. And uh, what do we get? We get nothing. Hmm. Okay, let's press menu. This has got a auto search thing. How do you initiate it? Press it to the right. There we go. It's doing an auto search. I don't think it'll find it on VHF. It's going to have to go to UHF. So that was VHF low. This is VHF high. Right. I'm going to have to sit and wait um, until it goes into the UHF band. You can see here that it's on PAL is the color system. The sound system is I and PAL I, I think was used in the UK and Hong Kong, if I remember rightly, but possibly not in other parts of um, Europe. Anyway, I'll let that just uh, see if it can find some Tele signals. Yeah, it's not finding anything yet. 
Might as well just let it carry on. Not getting any tele signals. What's going on? Right, I didn't actually have the computer switched on. There's a little switch on the side. I thought I heard a high pitched whine when I plugged in the plug. Must have just been my tinnitus. Okay, well then uh, we'll let this uh, scanning thing complete its scan. Oh, it seems to have found something. It's slowed down and. It... Oh, now that looked promising. Um, it's just going to finish its scan and then we'll go back and have a look at what it picked up. And uh, look at that, we've got CBM Basic V2, um, 3583 bytes free. So it's only three and a half K of RAM. I mean, that's not much, is it? This is a bit of a noddy computer. And it's ready, ready for what, I wonder? So you should be able to guess, or possibly guess from the CBM, um, which manufacturer this is. And the clue I gave you earlier, that this chip is the video interface controller Vic. Yeah, this is a Vic 20. Yeah, so here's the case front. It's a bit big. None of this stuff's fitting on my desk very well. Commodore Vic 20. That's what this thing is. Um, yeah, I don't know what vintage is. Uh, is it 80s? Is it 90s? Now, if we're going to get uh, this to do something, we need the keyboard. This is the keyboard. It has a lot of wires. So it certainly doesn't look like it's a serial keyboard. There are too many wires really also for it to even be a parallel keyboard. In fact, what I suspect this is, is just simply a matrix of switches. I think it's a completely dumb keyboard and the CPU must have to be scanning this keyboard using these PIAs or PIOs or whatever they are, uh, VIAs, versatile interface adapters. They're just parallel ports really. It's gonna be uh, driving this big connector here, um, scanning this matrix of keys. So. Let's put that on there. I hope I don't short anything out and plug this in here. Which way does it go? Um, this connector has a keyed slot there, so it must go that way. Let's plug it in. It won't mind being plugged in live if it is just a matrix of keys. And uh, right, let's look at the telly. Right, here we go. Let's type some stuff. And nothing appears on the telly. This keyboard is completely, ah, dead apart from the L key. Are there any other keys working? Oh, and the return key works. Well, that's pretty good because I can type L return and it says syntax error ready. So there's a major problem with this keyboard. Um, none of the keys work. I mean, none of them. Oh, hang on, V. Yeah, V works some of the time, L works, return works, but um, very few of the keys on this keyboard work. So I can't even type in, I don't think the numbers even work. No, so I can't even type in a program. Oh, the nine works. Yeah, the nine just about works. Now, what's the problem here? Um, odd keys work, but most of them don't. I mean, to me, that doesn't really sound like bad contacts, or is it? You know, to me, that's almost as though sort of a large part of the matrix scanning system has packed up. Um, but what I thought I'd do is just use this pair of pliers to short out pairs of these pins. Because as I say, I think this is just a huge matrix of switches. So if I short out pairs of these pins, I should be able to get um, characters come up. And I'm going to do this fairly randomly. Let's do that one and that one. Ah, and I've got F's coming up there. Um, and if I press the F key, absolutely nothing. But if I short out these um, scanning matrix connections, then I can get F. So let's try something else. Ah, right, yeah, I've got zeros coming up there. Type the zero key and nothing's happening. So what's interesting is the scanning seems to be working fine. Let's try something else going from that one, say to that one. Well, that's nothing, but that might be because that's an invalid. Oh, that seems to have completely cleared the screen. Is it still working? Oh yeah, still returning. L, return syntax error. That's all right. I must have done a clear screen thing. Is that a clear screen thing there? Uh, let's try that one and that one. That doesn't do anything. How about that one? No, it has to be that one and that one. No, that's not a valid combination. And that's F again. Let me just 
try resizing this so I can have a different span. That one and that one. Yeah, and that's giving me H. Let's try the H key. And nothing coming up on the display. So the point is, the scanning is getting to this connector. It's getting onto this circuit board, but the keys aren't actually um, triggering the computer to do anything. So maybe it is just literally bad connections in there. Maybe they've just gone so gammy and tarnished that only a few of them are still working. That unfortunately means I'm going to have to take this whole keyboard thing apart, which is a bit of a hassle. So I'm going to have to take out all of these teeny tiny little screws, it looks like, uh, to remove this, mm, what's this, Paxilin or, or SRBP, resin bonded, um, something resin bonded paper. It's a very low cost PCB uh, material, but it's attached to the keyboard with lots and lots of these tiny, tiny little screws. There's all this, also this horrible pair of wires that comes down to two pins here. And in fact, if you look on the other side of the keyboard, uh, and let's go that way, that is this key, which is shift lock. And that is actually a, a latching key. So it's probably that that's a different type of switch to the other switches, which are presumably just spring loaded, um, pressing down on some contacts on the PCB type switch. So that may have to come off. Uh, let's continue unscrewing these little tiny screws until we get inside this uh, keyboard. Right, that's all the screws undone. Now, will this come off? Um, well, it sort of will. Oh, ah, it wants to lift off those two uh, pins. So, ooh, I'm going to have to unsolder those. Uh, and I think that means switching the computer off. So let's switch it off um, because, well, I need the plug for my uh, soldering iron. Now, while my soldering iron warms up, I want to say a massive thanks to Jonty. Uh, Jonty, who's given me loads of stuff before, actually, solar panel, lots of solar related stuff, that Art of Electronics book. Um, and he also gave me this Vic 20 and another computer. I won't say what it is just yet. Uh, also loads of stuff. We've got here a box. Uh, containing an introduction to basic which has a manual in it and uh, what else is in there oh some cassette tapes lovely there is a cassette interface for this thing i think somewhere um jonty has also given me all this stuff some games there are game cartridges for this uh, a vic 20 user's guide to sargon vic graphics book star battle Get acquainted with your VIC-20, personal computing, a friendly guide, loads of stuff. So thank you, John T. Really kind. Right, let's try desoldering these. Yep, that one's off. And that one is off. And I've marked plus and minus so I know which way to put them back. Although it shouldn't actually matter, should it? Because this, this is just a switch. And it's across two points on this matrix. So I wouldn't have thought that would matter too much. But anyway, um, right, that's off. So now this can come off and it does come off. And there are all the little um, key rubber things, these carbonized uh, rubber. And then this is the board of contacts. And that doesn't look too bad at all. That's not tarnished. Are these gold plated? They might be. Yeah, these look absolutely fine. Um, still very shiny, no obvious tarnishing. So I don't think these are just bare copper. They do seem to be, um, they must be plated with uh, gold because actually they fared a lot better than the edge connectors at the back of the board. I don't know whether you can see those, but these ones on the, or whatever interface that is and that one there, haven't fared terribly well at all. Yes, yeah, so um, these things are, this is just a mechanical um, array of keys and they sit in these little channels. Actually, if you push them too far, they kind of fall out of the channels. But yeah, you push them up like that. That um, on and off switch there for the caps lock is an actual electrical switch. 
Now, the thing is, we had L working, didn't we? So if I take the L key, let's lock that down so I know which one it is. And I've noticed that these things just pop out. So you can take these little rubber things with their integrated sort of carbonized rubber thing um, out. You can see a little indentation or a pattern there of the actual fingers on the board. But if I sort of jab this on the pads on that board, would that work without actually using this? And, and then I can check pretty much all of the keys and see if they work. Right, so I've set that so that we can see this board and the screen. Now, if I jab this down onto, say, there, do we get... Ah, yes, I've got a plus symbol there. Um, do we get some numbers? Zero, nine, nine. What about some of these in the middle? This is quite sort of bendy rubber, so it's quite hard to do. Uh, what about that? P... O, I, U, or a couple of U's, bit of a bit of bounce there, and Y. So yeah, by using this um, working bit of conductive rubber and tapping it down onto uh, various combinations of these. Actually, if I press that with my finger, no, that doesn't work. It needs to be uh, a lower resistance than my finger is. But so that's working. So I think all of these contacts are working. The, matrix is working it's simply these must have got contaminated or just are incredibly dirty um, now i don't have any isopropyl alcohol cleaner so how am i going to do this right so that one works that was the one that was in the l key let's just try jabbing that on there yeah i've got some y's and some u's um, this one shouldn't work because that came out of a key that i don't think work was working the t let's jab that on there Oh, it kind of works. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to lick this, actually. But I can't taste anything, so I don't think there's any um, nasty contaminant on the surface of that. I'm just wondering what, not because I don't have any isopropyl alcohol, what I could use um, to clean that. I'm just wondering whether I'd just give it a bit of a scrub on some cardboard. Right, here's a piece of card, but I've obviously cut something out of that. What was that for? Oh, yes, I remember what that was. Um, okay, so I'll just give that a bit of a, a rub like so. That should... The cardboard's quite abrasive. That should take any dirt off the surface of that. And then let's try that on there. Yeah, semicolon, colon, P. What's that key? Oh, the at symbol. So if I clean a few of these up, and put this back uh, underneath the keys, we can see whether that actually will work. Probably should have some isoprop. Maybe I'll go and buy some. Well, this does seem to be working. And in fact, you can see there where, where I scrub the um, conductive rubber, you can see little swirls of dirt coming off. Um, so this does seem to be cleaning it using a sort of abrasive cleaning technique. Let's jab that on here, see if I get some letters. Yeah, got some nines, got some eights, got some sevens there. So, um, yeah, I think I might continue to use that cleaning technique, clean all of these little rubbers up, and then uh, give this another try. Yeah, I think licking these things is probably not a good idea for health reasons. I'll have some Pepsi Max that'll fry any germs that I might have taken in. Yeah, so now I'm dabbing these things on my wet sponge and then uh, rubbing them on the cardboard. And because you can see dirt coming off them, they must be cleaning up. So let's try that one. Oh yeah, and that's producing lots of nice nines and eights. Yeah, these are cleaning up really well. Right, here they are, all 60 something of them, all loose on here. Um, they cleaned up without solvent, but you can see that um, by dragging them over the surface of this cardboard, and I've used both sides of this, I've taken off probably um, a little bit of the top surface of the rubber, which I think is a good thing because it exposes uh, the next sort of layer down of, of rubber. I mean, it's only a micro tiny bit. I haven't really reduced these uh, in height by any amount. No solvent, just water. Let's reassemble it and see if I can type a program. So these things um, just literally push back into these little housings where they're held in just with friction. Um, there's about 60 
or so of these things, I think. 66 did I count? I can't remember now. So I'll just pop those all back in. That won't take very long. And uh, screw the this board back on top of here. Right, let's do the last few of these on camera. So it's just literally a rubber thing which pushes into that receptacle. And I have to say, the way this keyboard has been designed, it is super easy to clean all these little rubber things up and uh, poke them back in their little key receptacles. And uh, yeah, that's done. That's all the uh, little rubber pieces back, including the uh, space bar, <laughs> which has got stuck. Uh, yeah, so they're all in place and ready for the uh, board to be put back over the top, this thing. So that locates on two little um, plastic studs. Where's the other one? Just out of shot there. So that locates on these two plastic pins to get the uh, location right. And what have I done? I've pushed one of these keys up here, that one. Um, so the only thing, other thing you have to do is make sure these pins for the uh, caps lock key poke through those holes and let's put all the screws back in. Right, that's about half the screws put back in. That's enough just to uh, check whether this thing is going to work. Let's power it on. And yeah, the TV says ready. Let's see if I can type some stuff. Reangle my camera so it's there. Now, how do you write programs on a VIC-20? I have no idea. Um, I'm just assuming that you type in a line number. So 10, uh, print, oh, that says RIN. Uh, where's backspace? It's delete, isn't it? So P R I N T. No, some of the keys are not working. I N T. Oh no, T's not working at all. I can't type print. Oh, that's annoying because without the uh, T key, I can't do prints and I can't do go tos. But I have found in this appendix that for print, you can actually do a question mark. Uh, go to, you can do G shift O. So let's try that. So 10 uh, question. Oh, what's going on there? Uh, let's go back to there. Space shift question mark. Oh no, that's not right. Now oh, why is that that way around? Question mark, no. Oh, maybe the shift key doesn't work. Uh, shift question mark. Oh, the shift key doesn't work either. Right, I'm really having to fudge things here. Um, neither of these two shift keys work. However, these two wires are the shift locks. If I touch them together, I can do a shift. Yes, question mark. There it is. Uh, I also need to do a shift for a quote. <laughs> That one doesn't work. Well, now the other possibility is that whatever gunk was coating the uh, rubber might also have got onto these gold contacts. I'm just going to use a pencil eraser to rub a few of these, particularly the shifts and the T, um, to see if that's what the problem is. Uh, don't want to rub too hard with this because the gold could be quite thin. But uh, yeah, just rub that a bit with uh, something abrasive to get the muck off. Yeah, I think that must be it because um, there's... T that's now working just using one of these pulled out of the keyboard uh, there's R so R and T and T wasn't working until I gave it a scrub with the rubber so I think the rubbers are okay it's now these contacts that need cleaning up right here we go finally 10 print uh, quotes Julian yeah uh, another set of quotes probably need return 20 whoops Let's put that back up on the heatsink uh, go to 10 it's all working now because I cleaned up all the contacts on the PCB uh, return run yes look at that how do you stop it oh maybe this key run stop uh, can I see that? Yeah, there. Run, stop. Yeah, break in 10. Ready. Fantastic. 8-bit computing. Cheerio.